I trust that you're doing well. Welcome to Miss Fountain Channel, your go-to destination for insightful and engaging educational content. Here we explore a wide range of topics from science and history to technology and beyond. Prepare to expand your knowledge and spark your curiosity with our carefully crafted videos. Subscribe now and join us on our journey of discovery. In today's session, we're going to look at chain of custody. We're going to begin with defining what a chain of custody is, what it must include, and what is advised for it to be accurate, and the factors that can break it. Stay tuned, watch this video to the end. So what is a chain of custody? A chain of custody is a tracking of is a tracking record beginning with detailed scene notes that describe where evidence was received or collected. It shows the process of the evidence there from when it was collected till when it's presented in a court of law. In a crime scene, the collecting officer who collects the, that specific evidence has to sign and any other person who handles that evidence, maybe a, maybe a toxicologist or other forensic scientist or analyst, anyone who handles that evidence has to sign till it's produced in court by a prosecuting lawyer. So what must be included in a chain of custody? In a chain of custody, there's a unique identifier. There's the description of the item, the identity of the person who collected the item, time and date of collection, the location where the item was found, how the item was preserved, as well as who was part of the chain of, phys of the physical custody. That is, anyone who handled it from the first stage of collection till it's produced in court. And for accurate chain of custody, some things must be done. And one is limit the number of people handling the evidence. The lesser the people, the better. We, the second thing is confirm all names, identity numbers, and dates are correct. You seal the package. And sealing plays an important role as it will also prevent uh, cross-contamination. We also double check markings before submission. This is just to ensure everything is correct. And also obtain signed receipts upon transfer. That is transfer from one person to the next maybe from a forensic pathologist to a forensic toxicologist, it is say till it's, it's produced in court. We have some factors that can break the chain of custody and this should be avoided so as to maintain the integrity that is required and th these factors include investigators waiting too long to collect the evidence, improper storage of the evidence. When there is improper storage, there will even be cross-contamination of different evidences. We have mislabeled evidence. It's even is it's it's possible to mix the evidences up if they are not uh, labeled properly. If there is alteration of digital evidence, and also when there is a, another raised person access evidence, that is a person who is not supposed to access that evidence and anyone else who is not authorized, that is going to break the chain of custody. Yeah, that's what we refer to as the chain of custody and the various factors that are that should be observed for it to be for it not to be broken.
Thank you for joining us.